Hey guys, welcome to the fourth episode of the Push Pop Podcast, and today we're going to be talking about junk volume versus quality volume, and really going into what junk volume means for you. So first things first, we need to understand what junk volume actually means. So um, when it comes to training, you have your total volume, which is your sets times reps times weight, and if this volume is at an adequate intensity and um, an adequate uh training modality so hypertrophy if you're trying to grow muscle for example then that volume is going to be productive towards your goals as if you're trying to grow muscle that volume is going to help you build muscle junk volume is extra training so it's more sets which become unproductive towards your goals or even counterproductive by holding back the results from the first the the initial sets which are high quality that what we call quality volume so Junk volume is either going to hold you back or it's going to waste your time or it's going to regress you in some uh, certain situations. So the, the the easiest way for us to look at what is junk volume and what is quality volume and what that means for us is to give two scenarios. So if you had a day where you trained chest and you were doing bench press and dumbbell press and flies, And in one of these scenarios, you did 20 sets for your chest, 20 hard sets for your chest in that one session. And in the other scenario, you did two chest sessions that week, but only 10 sets in each. So you had more time to do another muscle group alongside it. You're getting that double frequency um, and you're only doing 10 sets in each session. What changes about this? Is it exactly the same? Well, no. Okay. So... If you're performing 20 sets in one session for just chest, the main thing that's going to cause issues is that by the last sets, you're going to be fatigued. So if you get to 15 sets, your chest is absolutely knackered already if your uh, intensity has been adequate. So the actual mental focus that you have on these last sets is going to be lacking. This is an issue because towards the end is when you start doing things like cable flies and stuff like that uh, typically and if you're doing sets of let's say 8 to 12 or 12 to 15 even 15 to 20 a lot of that is a mental game and every rep needs to be high quality and looking the same as the last so your first rep should look the same as your last rep and that takes a lot of mental focus if you've battered your chest for a whole session your mental focus isn't going to be there and you're not going to be performing reps to the highest quality you could do. Whereas if your volume was split on two days, so instead of doing four sets of flies in one session, you did two sets of flies across two sessions, uh, two sets of flies in two sessions individually. So four session, four sets of flies across the session, sorry. You're going to have more mental focus, so each of those reps is going to be performed better and therefore they're going to be higher quality and that total weekly volume of flies that you're doing is going to contribute more to muscle growth than if you're cramming them all into one day. Similarly along these same lines is the energy that you have for the sets. So again, if you've done 15 sets or 12 sets or whatever it may be, really hard sets to failure or near failure, Once you get to set 16, 17, 18, 19, especially set 20, your actual energy is going to be very low. We're talking about bench, so uh, chest, so we'll carry on with that. Your triceps, they're going to be tired, they're going to be weak. Your shoulders are going to be tired, they're going to be weak. And your chest is going to be absolutely exhausted at this point. So if you did a press as your last five or three or four sets, you're not going to be very strong with that press and that's because you've already done so much that day whereas if you did that same press on a different day you'd be able to get more weight you'd be able to get more reps or the form itself would be better or all three so again those reps that you're performing are going to contribute more to your goals than if you crammed them on at the end of that day just because you don't physically have the energy to perform your best on those days so why would you want to hold yourself back and do less weight less reps just to get it done in one day when you can hit a higher frequency so training it twice a week and get 
more weight, lift more weight, lift more reps, and just have a higher overall quality within your sessions. Um, what's also really interesting when you look into this is the actual exercise selection. So everyone knows that there is a hierarchy of exercises. So there are some exercises which are just better than others. There's kind of no denying that. So if you're doing a bench press, this is going to be more effective for chest growth than, for example, a dumbbell fly or a cable fly. Yes, the flies are taking your chest for a fuller range of motion. However, it's a compound movement with the bench. The amount of load that you can put on your muscles, the amount of stress, you just can't beat it. The compound exercises are what's going to grow muscle. So if you're doing 20 sets in one session, what that's typically going to look like is three or four sets of bench press. Then you'll have a few sets of a dumbbell press, like an incline press. So let's say you're doing 10 overall sets of pressing. Then you start doing sets of flies. You start doing incline flies, cable flies. You do a machine press on a cable machine, that kind of stuff. And that's what we call fluff at the end of an, uh, at the end of a session. So you're doing the accessory movements. They're not you're not using massive load. You're stretching the muscle. You're thinking about the contractions or not because you've lost your mental focus. But anyway, we're, we've already spoken about that. So you're doing these fluffy exercises on the end. And these really aren't going to contribute much to your muscle growth. They're going to help fatigue the muscle, which is a factor in hypertrophy. However, as like I said, they're not going to be anywhere near as effective as these big compound movements that are going to have a big impact on your CNS. They're really going to send that muscle building signal. But if you did those same 20 sets across two sessions, something quite interesting happens to exercise selection. So... Typically, you wouldn't just half that session, so those sets of bench press become two on the first session, two on the second. What happens is you end up doing four sets on the first session and four sets on the second session. So now you've got eight sets of bench press a week, which is the most effective movement for your chest, rather than four sets a week. Then you're doing your incline dumbbell press, and you're doing three sets on the first one, and then three sets on the second one as well. Or it might just be a variation like an incline bench, but you're doing one of these big compound pressing movements. That takes you to eight sets. Uh, no, it doesn't. It takes you to these seven sets. So then your last three sets, then that's typically when you start doing like a cable fly or a dumbbell fly to stretch out the chest, take it for a full range of motion. And then that is your 10 sets done for that day. So what you've done here is you've pretty much cut out all the fluff on the end. So... You're doing the same amount of sets a week. You're still doing 20 sets of volume on your chest. However, you're doing more effective uh, more effective exercises because you've set it up across the week. And because of that, you're going to see a better result in terms of muscle development. And I think that makes quite a lot of sense just on its own. However, we can look at it further. Even if you did just not do more effective sets, uh, more effective exercises across the two sessions. Like I was saying, because of the mental focus and the energy, you'd be coming into the second session fresh. Even if you did the exact same amount of the compound movements and you did more of the fluffy uh, isolation exercises on the end, those isolation exercises would still give you more and you'd still get more from the compound movements due to being fresher and having more energy to push that weight. So... Even if you didn't get all the benefits that I just spoke about, you're still getting additional benefits by splitting up your session. So along the same lines of this, the volume that you're doing in that day is going to have more quality purely because you're fresher. So there's a, t there's a concept called diminishing returns in that more of a good thing isn't always good. So more and more volume to a certain point will cause more and more muscle growth. However, there's a point where you start doing more volume and you start actually reducing your muscle growth. So in a weight training session, there is a kind of amount of volume which is independent for everyone, but it's typically around a certain range. 
that is going to be the most effective target for muscle growth and beyond that you're not really adding much and then beyond that you start seeing things go down so you actually get less muscle growth and this is because the additional volume is hindering your recovery so when we're looking at recovery we can take the mental focus aspect out of it we can take the energy aspect out of it we can even remove the exercise selection recovering itself is going to cause is a reason to avoid hitting that junk volume and this is because if you are hitting so much volume in one day that you can't adequately recover in terms of your cns as well as your muscles you're not going to be able to push as much weight in other sessions because your cns is going to be fried you're not going to be able to activate your muscle fibers um, and work to the same capacity if you're not uh, fully recovered from sessions and a session of 20 sets on one muscle group alone is going to be very very taxing on your recovery whereas if you split this recovery demand up into two sessions like we spoke about so 10 sessions across two, two 10 sets across two sessions sorry it is going to be a lot more manageable for you to recover from and therefore you're going to be more effective in your other sessions and your next session for chest so if you are training chest and you are so sore that when it comes to training chest again, do you really think that that session where you're training sore is going to be as effective as possible? No, that session in itself is going to be pretty much purely junk volume likely. And it shows that a lot of the volume you performed in your last training session was also junk volume. So we're starting to see how junk volume really isn't going to help towards your muscle growth. It is going to hinder it or diminish your results so aside from all the junk volume when it comes to splitting up sessions so the 20 sets across two sessions rather than one science has shown higher frequencies of muscle training do lead to better results in terms of muscle growth so if you're doing all your sets in one go regardless of the junk volume you're then hitting that muscle once a week so if you look at that that's four times a month that's 52 times a year. Do you think that's going to be optimal for building muscle four times a month? Or does eight times a month sound better, 104 times a year? If you look at each session as a chance for your muscle to grow, you want to give your muscles as much chance as possible to grow. So 52 times a year is okay. 104 times is pretty good. But you can even push it to three times a week. Um, four times a week in some situations where you're doing four sessions of, of full body um, but that's a whole different podcast entirely so basically increasing your volume is going to give you more opportunities to grow which is going to be more effective you're going to have more effective sets within those sessions and you're going to feel better because you're going to be more recovered and you'll be stronger you'll have more energy your exercise selection is going to be better and you won't be getting those diminishing returns that come from cramming all your volume into a few sessions. So the last thing we really need to touch on is what, what, where is that kind of threshold for junk volume for most people? So we can look at this in two ways. We can look at per session junk volume and we can look at weekly junk volume. So in terms of pure session, uh, per session volume, uh, the, the the examples we were using is what I would recommend. So for most people, once you reach 10, se 10 sets on a muscle group on one session, anything more than that tends to be hitting that junk volume threshold. So if you were doing 10 hard sets close to failure, if not to failure of shoulder pressing, then any more than that is very, very likely to be in that junk volume threshold because your secondary muscles and tertiary uh, muscles are going to be fatiguing, your uh, mental focus and energy and the actual strength of your shoulders is obviously going to be massively decreased. If you did 10 heavy sets of legs on the leg press and squats, any more than 10, again, you're going to be hitting that junk volume. It's not going to be productive towards your goals. So for mo you know there's going to be variants i'm not saying if you do 11 oh my god that's junk volume some people are going to be able to go 12 14 even 16 some people junk volume is going to be any more than four five or six sets it depends on your ability how hard you're training 
your training experience, how long you've been doing it for. It depends on your gender, what your diet looks like. You know, the the, the higher calories are, if you're bulking, you're going to have higher threshold for junk volume, uh, for quality volume, than if you're cutting, because you're not going to have as much energy if you're on a diet. So then if we look at per week volume, this is a lot more interesting. It's harder to say. There's that in the studies that have been done, it's shown that more volume is pretty much more results if it's split up and recovered from adequately. So as long as you're sticking to those 10 sets per muscle per session, it seems that if we do, let's say three sessions, so 30 sets a week, you're going to get more results than if you did 20 a week. And there's even been some uh, t- some places where they've shown up to 40 sets per week has shown better results than 30. However, this is on high, uh, highly advanced athletes, which have a massive ability for recovery and a massive threshold for training, basically, because it's it's their profession. So don't assume that applies to you. My recommendation for the general person would be around 20 sets per muscle per week and 10 sets per muscle per session. So that's going to have you hitting every muscle twice a week, 10 sets in each session. And if you're pushing yourself adequately, if you're getting towards those 8, 9, even 10 RP, then this is going to be quality volume you're going to be avoiding junk volume and you're going to be getting the best results possible. Okay, so thanks for listening. If you have any questions on today's topic, feel free to contact me and I'll be more than happy to ask. See you in the next one.